Today I'm going to do a demonstration on how to paint copper and that's a little copper ink dispenser from long ago um, and that's another example of a copper pot. This pot has a, a much different patina to it. It's almost pink. I don't know if you can tell that from the video but see how much more orange the ink that is inkwell is no it's not an inkwell the ink dispenser see the two different the difference neither one is better than the other but this looks more characteristically copper so I'm going to paint it today um, it's also much simpler than that piece would be but it's fun to paint I've painted that many times okay but we're going to focus on this and you'll notice there's a a lot of patina uh, as the the little vessel comes up and around and then it gets more orange toward the bottom so somehow we have to capture those two textures I also want to point out this highlight over here on the right side of it I don't like that so I'm going to try to uh, flag it with this light that actually has this uh, piece of black wrap on it. So having lowered this light now um, and with the black wrap on it, it flags that little highlight that was on the right side of the little ink can. You see that? It's, we're always trying to control everything on the still life, and that's the luxury of doing still life, is you can do that. Of course, when you go outside, you can't do that, and you have to be more inventive. But when we're inside, we're always trying to control our light, both on the subject and on our canvas. So I'll be painting this right here today from my palette, and let's get started. So to paint my copper pot, I am uh, going to use these paints I have laid out, which is my standard titanium white, yellow oak, um, this is red oxide, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. I don't really need sap green out here, it was out here from something else I painted, so I'm probably going to ignore that. Uh, this is cad yellow medium, cad orange, cad red, and alizarin. I think those colors will all come in helpful to me. I'm not so sure about these two. I don't know how much those will contribute, but they'll contribute some. Some. So, you know, you kind of guess at what you're going to need, but that this is a pretty standard palette anyway. So I think I'll be able to make it work with this. So I'm going to start by making uh, piles. First I'm going to make um, a pile for my background. So there's a lot of white in it. It's a high key background or a lightly colored background. So because I'm using orange and blue, put some of that in there. some of that there. Okay, so we're going to try to mix up a nice uh, gray from these colors because we're going to use blue in that dark patina part of the copper pot. Then we're going to use orange, of course, in the light. Um, so we might as well use these two to mix a neutral gray because since they're complements, when you mix them together, they will look like gray. See, they're already doing that nicely but I want it to go darker yet so you see there becomes my neutral gray now I'm going to make some of my pot color um, and I use a lot of umber in it but it is going to have some orange too. There's a warmth to it. 
I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this. Instead of umber, I'm going to, I'm going to head a little more into the blue. It's pretty dark. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to have leave that as a pile by itself. Then I'm going to make a color that's a little brighter than that. I'll leave that up there. And now I'm going to do some bright, some of that bright orange, which is actually not straight orange, because if you add white to straight orange, it becomes really almost pinky. It's like an ugly, nauseating color. So we want to keep it bright with some of that. So we're going to need some of that. Um, I'm going to need some more of this. And I think that looks like the highlight. That's pretty good for the highlight. At least for now. Now all these piles can get tweaked late, later. I'm going to save this over here too, just for kicks. So yeah, these are just beginning piles and I will continue to add to them if I need to. I'm first going to get a underpainting going by mixing not what I've mixed up here, but I'm just going to take a little bit of this blue and a little bit of umber. I hope you can see this. Yes. Um, and I want, I, I need a little bit of turp to make this a wash. Okay, so first we want to locate the position of this. When you're doing a single object, it makes most sense to put it in the center of the canvas. This is centered. Well, you're not looking at that upper one, but um, it, unless there's a reason to offset it, keep it centered. So we have this movement going on with this thing that goes something like this. And there's a shadow that comes off of it like this. And from here, we, now that we've located it, we start looking for the other features of it. Actually, that little tip is only going to come to about there. I know this side, I'm going to reach into a little bit darker paint, because I know this side is darker. So I'm going to go ahead and start darkening that side some. down a little. And the shadow comes off it. it. Right now it's just one shape to me. Squinting the whole time I'm doing this. pretty rounded because I'm looking down upon it. So that ellipse at the bottom is pretty rounded. But the, uh, the pot 
that stops here. I'm going to use this to address the patina now over here in the light. It was also to address my shadow. I'll probably go even darker with the blue to the edge of this. It just seems so rich black. figure out the architecture of this, so to speak. How does that come and go with the, that little elliptical thing on top of it? I'll work that out later. Right now I want to finish that. In, in my palette cup, I've got, I've got turpenoid to start, I'm going to bring the bottom of this up just a little bit because it looks too long to me. Okay, so now I'm going to start reaching into my other paints. I'm going to put some of this the lighter brown and over here. Even as I go, I feel like it, there's a little uh, need for some red in there. Not, not obviously like that. I'm, I just want to, sometimes I just throw it in to kind of mush it around. Feel the warmth of it. This has that same patina that this side has, but it's catching the light, so it's got to have more, uh, more of a light value to it. There's a, a ridge where all of this stops, right about there. And back to this paint. So I'm trying to get my darks done first before I put my lights on. But very soon I'm going to have to throw my some background color in around this because I don't want to go far without that. I'm going to try to get this dead center. This is where you want to hold your um, knitting needle up like this. Let it hang so you can see where the center of it is. Looks like it's right about there. Just for fun. I'm going to put in a little this and of this. I'm going to 
this feels greenish to me. In here, just a little. It's actually, uh, there's a plane change. It, it, it's straighter here, and then it starts curving. Oof, I don't like that yellow bleeding through like that. to do that. That'll come later. Okay, um, like I said, I'm, I'm very anxious to get into my background color now. Um, so I'm going to pick up a different brush for that. Sometimes you don't know till you get it up there what it's going to do. So... We get to correct all sorts of things by sculpting. Always striving to get something like that really straight because it'll come back to haunt you if it's not. So even though I don't always paint to the edge of the of the uh, canvas at this point, I really want to get it around my subject just to get an idea of uh, what it needs to do to the subject because this color has to be in here somewhere. So you've always got to be aware that the colors have to work together. the little neck of that. It's actually pretty blue. There's a, a dustiness, almost a dusty feeling to this, like the surface of this, for instance. It almost feels dusty blue to me. In keeping with painting the finish, I'm not happy with this, how this looks yet, so I've got to, I've got to get happier with it um, and do some, make it look better so that if I needed to walk away from it, I could, you see. So already I'm, I'm happier with that, um, I think I'm going to have to sculpt the one side down a little bit. See, I, I contaminated my brush, so I'm going to pull off some paint. wanted to lose that edge. It was annoying me. Why was it annoying me? Um, you want to lose a lot of edges. You don't, you want to lose more than you want to find. I 
really see some beautiful blues going in through here. A nice pretty blue color. Just going to throw a little in there for now. Not as dark, not as dark as the pot. The shadow fuzzes out as it gets away from it. So <clears throat> the edges of the shadow up close are very sharp edged and then they get softer as they go away. I touch things here and there and do this and that, knowing that knowing full well I'll probably go back into it and correct a lot of it, but I won't correct all of it. I'll leave some of the loose, looseness because you like some of the looseness. A little looseness is good. It makes you happy, or I hope it will. up a little now. I may need a little more sculpting here. There we go. I don't just stay in one spot, as you may have noticed. Like there's this blue glow that kind of surrounds that highlight. So you see, with one simple object like this, you all may seem like, oh, that's so boring, but look how much, you know, hard work goes into it. So don't be afraid to paint one single object at a time. It's such good practice. We've definitely got a beautiful little orange note. Very subtle up here. But we've also got those little blue. Because when the light hits the patina, it turns it blue. It's cool. That's how I should say it. It's cool. Um, can't wait to put the highlight on that edge. But first I need to get the edge just where I want it.
that's okay because as I keep saying, this is a process of sculpting. So we're just going to sculpt that up. I'm going to load my brush with something dark to swipe the top of this neatly. I am dipping into my oxide to add a little bit of orange as it comes around here like this. And the red oxide has a is a transparent color. So it can give you some really beautiful. Hmm. Cooler highlight on top of that now. So I think it's got both in it. into that background a little bit more to um, shape up the point and we'll be about done. Well, done is a subjective term, as we all know. Are you ever done? That is the question. You never want to leave a line like that. Try to pull it away so that it doesn't look like the background comes up to it, stops, and goes around it. It destroys the illusion. Something fierce, so don't do that. Again, we don't want the strokes to look like they're going all around it, so we have to take our time to pull those strokes away.
Okay, that's good enough.